Holger. Oracle obviously recently introduced its Gen 2 Exadata Cloud to customer. This coming at a time when many other public cloud providers have yet to unveil their first generation or make it generally available. Yeah. What's your take on Gen 2 ExaCC and how that compares and contrasts to what's been promised and what's actually out in the market? Well, first of all, congratulations to the fast revision because it's only been a little more than a year that Gen 1 was out. And I think that's important because a new category is being established, which allows companies to run a complete cloud infrastructure stack on premises while being serviced by the vendor who built that. And that is unique. Uh, in the marketplace right now. Nobody else doing the same thing. Uh, Microsoft is doing Azure Stack since a longer time, but it's not on their hardware. It's on partner hardware, as they traditionally have partnered. Uh, we see equally IBM Cloud Private uh, coming, and now we'll have to see what they're going to do with Red Hat. Uh, we know Google has announced Antos, but it's also going to be on partner hardware. And the big unknown is still AWS Outpost, which is going to be more details coming later in 2019. But for now, I mean, you guys are moving onwards uh, with better spec on Gen 2. And the key value proposition really is I have an extension of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. You, my system is going to be managed the same way as you're running your own data centers, as if I was running in your data center. And that same technology stack from the bits and bytes, from the CPU to the user click, uh, I call identicality. And the higher the identicality is between my on-premise compute infrastructure and the public cloud infrastructure, structure where I might be going back and forward, the more peace of mind I have as a CTO or CIO that I have the important thing which is workload portability. And obviously the Oracle Gen 2 Exadata Cloud customer is, you, is managed, as you said, by our OCI you know, Gen 2 Cloud. The big difference is, is that it's managed as it was a part, as single server, multiple server, whatever, part of OCI. So when you push something out from a security perspective, maintenance perspective, there's no first or Concurrent. second class citizen, right? right there's right. nobody like in the traditional world where to say, oh, alerts coming from my vendor, I have to understand it, download, see, see when the patching window is inserted, maybe I'm not going to get to it. Right. And that's what creates many of the security issues. And public cloud vendors cannot provide that, and this is why they have to have a rock solid uh, way of doing this for their public clouds and by the way of treating um, the Exadata installations as an extension of your public cloud offering with OCI that gives the peace of mind and the same industrial necessary strength that you have on the public cloud for what I'm running on premise. So to your point, you're essentially you're taking the same hardware, the same infrastructure we yeah. have powering our autonomous database, powering our Oracle Exadata cloud service, all the Oracle database services, Exadata. And that's the other big gain, right? So that I can expect and see that autonomous, as you announce at Open World, will come to me at some point, which is also attractive because it's complex to run these stacks. So anything which will run on top of that uh, can be able to run autonomous, going to be a major differentiated advantage of running Oracle Exadata at customer. With generation one, we already had customers saying this was essentially an Oracle cloud within my own environment. Right. Now it's essentially managed by our own Gen 2 OCI public cloud. Mm -hmm. So it's an instantiation of our public cloud just within the four walls, confines right. of your own data set. Right. So that gives customer the full cloud experience, same hardware, same software, same management, same a a API, same control plane Correct. as the Oracle public cloud. But with the benefit of performance, right? We know the speed of light is the speed of light, but sometimes a little slower. With um, statutory requirements that I must have data residency locally, and with potential co-location benefits I have because I run lo loads which I cannot move to the public cloud on that local database. So if you have Oracle database and you wanted a cloud database service, database cloud service delivered on, in your uh, data center on premises, yeah. why would you pick anybody but X data cloud a customer? Why would you run it on Azure Stack? Why would you run it on Outpost when it's available? Well, is anybody still doing that? Right? Well, Outpost, we can't comment on. It's not yet available. We can't say it. But there's very little, um, I'm not aware of any significant critical loads running on Azure Stack on premise. Because why would you even have the idea? The idea of Azure Stack is I, I get a subset, a big subset of the Azure technology stack in the cloud on premise and can do this workload capability. It doesn't have the same high level, identical level 100% identicality that you have on the Exadata side, which gives you more peace of mind that if I build something custom on premise, if I do a 
develop an on-premise and then deliver to the public cloud with you guys or the other way around because of what we mentioned before, performance reasons, data residency reasons, uh, or I, I have to have things locally because my board wouldn't approve it. I can build on cloud, but I have to deploy and run transactional systems on-premises. I have that peace of mind guarantee that it, it needs to run. And if it doesn't run, it's a defect because it sets the same thing, right? So I can come back to you guys and make it work because you promised me this will work. And that's huge compared to where, oh, my developer picked up a dependency on something which is not running or my vendor was late in providing this on-premises. So there's significantly more risk with the other approaches. I agree with that. There is significantly more risk with the other approaches. And the other thing to consider is that only the Exadata Clouded Customer Service, Gen 2, delivers companies architectural identicality, whether they want to run an Exadata on-premise in the Clouded Customer Formation or in the Autonomous Database, the Exadata Cloud Service and other database services, Oracle. If the you, highest degree of an integrity, which of an is right now in the market. You buy Azure Stack, it's pick your flavor of hardware. Hmm? The company is responsible for paying and training its own Microsoft Azure Stack operator. We don't require that. Google Anthos, it's Cisco hardware. They don't use Cisco hardware in the Google public cloud, right? So It's partner hardware. It's partner hardware. Pick your own hardware, yep. right? So that's a different construct when you look at the overall deployment model. We're running same, same in every instantiation. Correct. They're running from, well, you can run Google software, Google Cloud services with Cisco hardware or somebody else's hardware, which has nothing to do with what we're running in the actual Google Cloud. Right. And Azure Stack is essentially doing the same. So the highest degree of identicality from a application portability, data mobility perspective, obviously that goes to Gen 2 X Data Cloud a customer. Agree. Companies obviously have run Oracle Exadata Cloud of Customer Gen 1 in their production environments. Now they get the added benefits of our further refinements, optimizations, brand new engineering innovation with Generation 2. If you're a customer, do you want to be a guinea pig with somebody's Generation 1? Or do you want to look at more Generation 2? Nobody wants to be a guinea pig, right? So, and obviously experience and references, right? Reference are the thing which make me feel I'm not a guinea pig if somebody who's in a similar industry or a similar load has done this successfully. And reference help of the ones who were early and you guys have been early with this. So, it comes back for you guys to execute on this in the marketplace and give the references to, to customers to convince them that it's the safer way to move Oracle instead of anybody else. And knowing what you know about Exadata and mm -hmm. the performance you can obtain yeah. from an Exadata which you've documented you know, extensively in the context of your research, how will the other vendors with the hardware stacks they purport to offer on-prem for their various cloud services, how will they compare with the performance of an X data? Well, their systems have not been done to be tuned for running the Oracle database. So it's not a fair comparison to a large part. It's more of a generic approach. And I think as long as a customer needs and wants to run the Oracle database, they're well advised looking at Exadata as the platform for that. And if they try other platforms, a free world, they can try other platforms, but it's probably going to be very hard for other platforms to come to a similar level from a Gen 2 perspective of managing on-premises, but also from a performance perspective, because you have the software, you know what the software right. will do, you know what kind of beast you have, which you have to put on a machine or in a cage, and uh, it's not a fair thing to compare that to someone who's thinking, oh, I have to build a cage which works for maybe other databases as well, right, because I want to get economies of scale. So it's a very different, different game that you guys are in compared to the traditional hardware vendors and the other cloud vendors. Code level engineering versus generic engineering. Yeah, no, knowing, knowing your code and your load which is running on your hardware makes the hardware engineering almost an unfair game.